going after their mom in here, won't we? Yeah. Go in here. Don't want to upset you. Really tough, man. Really tough. Get that area. glasses on there. Get your cone head. Rather be safe than sorry. Good girl. 
All right, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna go in here and do our anal glands. Come on. Oh, dang, huh? Okay, I know you don't like this. So hold tight, mom. Mm -hmm. Gotta use that jawbone. Hey. You, hey, I don't. I know you don't like this, but you're gonna have to. Gonna have to deal with this. I know you don't like this. Hey, you're gonna get mad at mommy, but you're gonna have to deal with this. No, no. You're gonna have a bad day, little girl. <laughs> you are just determined. I don't like you biting your mommy today. I'm just putting all the pressure on you and you still get away. Think about something else. You can think about something else. Think about something else. Go. Think about something else. Bep, 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 bep. Good, 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 good. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, let's try this one. And got you wore out a little bit. Bep, 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 Good, good, good. Bep, bep, bep. Bep, 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 bep. Nope, nope. Good, 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 good. It's so good, uh, so hey, you'll survive and you growl, you bark at me all day like you're talking to uh -uh. me all the time. Does she? Yes. Very good, very good. Get yeah. mad at mommy later. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Look at all those wrinkles, man. You growl all the time, Gigi. All the time you growl. You bark at me all the time, too. What a mustache, Gigi. Don't bite me, girl. Oh, there we go. Let's get this. Oh, yeah, we got it. Yes, we did. Look what you call. Okay, Mom, let's see if it's cleaned out good enough. How's it look? Let me see. Daddy, look at Mommy. Look at Mommy. Look at mommy, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Breathe, breathe. Look at that side, let me go over here. Go, go. Ooh, you got the shake, did you shake? Did you shake some of that? Let me look at mommy, look at mommy. Look at mommy. Look at mommy, close those big eyes. Can you close those big eyes? No. Let me see. Let me help you close this big guy here. Good. How's that? Is that good enough? That's good. Go. I don't want to detail stuff. She had a really bad seizure. So let's. The ears are the only thing that's kind of. Can you live with that? Yeah. Okay. They're shaved, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Good girl. Let me do some fun. Let's get you out of here. Okay. Is that fair? That's fair. Well, you saw, you, you kind of saw what happened. Oh, we're right still here. bleeding, baby girl. We're still bleeding. Are you? Let me check it. Okay, let me see here. Let me do this. Okay, put this here. Put this here. Let me check this little nail here you got going on. Is that correct? <laughs> Hey, hey, you guys. Thanks for watching Dee Dee Croy with My Favorite Groomer. So this message is about Gidget. Uh, she comes in. She's a Shih Tzu. She has been groomed by me since November 2016, and it is now August 2019. They found me through a veterinarian referral. Diamond, uh, I could be saying that wrong. Diamond Oaks. Down the road, they closed down. N uh, soon after they actually got here, they had closed down. The history is that Gidget was being groomed there like her entire life, I think. And at some point, not only did Gidget come in to me as a referral, but other clients actually came in, including cat clients. 
and there was just something going on with that facility. I don't know, I wasn't there, I never saw it. But when you have a client come in and another client and they all are having um, ailments like seizures, panics, anxieties, all because of the grooming process, it really does make you wonder. So it didn't take long for that company to close down. They actually sold the business and then the new owners ran it for a little while and then you saw them close down and I think they actually relocated down to like further downtown Fort Worth. I could be wrong, but I don't know. They're not there anymore. What I do know is Gidget came in and was referred to me by someone in there. She's no longer there. She works for a different veterinarian now. Thank you for the referral you guys uh, who are still watching me and Cap might, might see this. Gija has come here and has been able to go through grooming without seizures most of the time. I remember when she first came in, it was a struggle for me to make sure I did everything in my power to read her energy and read her language, her body language, and just her, just look at everything overall and try to make adjustments on my part so that her groom process would be fast, efficient, like a done deal, doesn't look beautified, but it's a shortcut all over, everything's off, I don't see her for a couple months, and she can rest and be cool, but no seizures. For me, it was like I would watch everything, whether she twitched or uh, what bought the groom loop, was the groom loop bothering her? What happened that put her in this position? The story behind it also is that they would, it got to a point where they would pull up the car to the veterinarian front and the dog would seizure out. <sighs> like, uh, and she does it. Her tongue is out of her mouth. She's shivering, shaking, and totally out of it. She does not know she's like going through this. And you kind of grab her up. I talked to the animal the whole time, but she was having these seizures if she pulled up to the vet. Or a couple times before that pull up, it was if she walked into the vet, boom, she would have a seizure on the ground before they could even like touch her to bring her back to go grooming. So at some point, somebody who referred business to me, thank you, over time, always referred a lot of business to me. And I appreciate you. Even though they had a groomer, there were still some dogs that they did not want or could not do. So they they had sent me referrals. We were like a team. Like I would just say, hey, you guys, what if you need something? I need something. I would call them. Always helped me on a front line if I needed, like a cat front line. I was like, I was all out. I was like, hey, you got some? I went down here and got some. We were a team. The staff and I were a team over there. And because we're so close, I mean, we're almost walking distance. Uh, they're not there anymore. And it's sad that an, something was happening. You know, I've seen a lot of things. And I envisioned a lot of things, uh, how, how people are running their businesses and how we all have our uh, frustrations and stuff. And sometimes, you know, when no one's watching, right? And even when people are watching, but people that, do, that won't be able to do anything about it, they're like in some of these corporate places, it's happening. I hear your stories. You're the one telling me your stories. I hear them. And I know it's happening. So... Whether the frustration of doing the job has gotten you to the point where you need a break and you take it out on the animal or a bad argument that day in your family life or, you know, and you take it out on the animal that you're working with. Um, I wish that you could step back and say, management, I'm, I need off. I need a break. I'm stressed out. I am not enjoying myself. I don't get paid enough. Whatever it is that you need to do so that you don't you know do things to the animal is really what I would just push you to do just I understand that sometimes we do things that you know we get overwhelmed and me too I'm not perfect uh, I don't try to reflect it on the animals if I get frustrated I probably have I'm not perfect and I reflect it on David say the way I talk to him or how moody I am or right like it's probably your husband your best friend your sister your mom your dad someone is probably hearing the buck end of your frustration and we're all not great people at doing it wish we could be more dog like right so I challenge you to look within including myself that whatever we do that we try not to take it out in the work that we do with people animals others and 
not buck at people that love us the most. And that's kind of the hardest thing because I think we always want to do like someone walking down the street, hi, how are you? How are you? Great. They only see that smile, right? They, the person that loves you the most sees every side of you. They see when you pass gas. They see when you pop a pimple. They see you pull a hair out. They see the grossest things about you. They see you when you go diving and you've never dove before and you got boogers out your nose. That's your partner. That's your mom, your dad, your best friend, your sister. Those are the people that see those, those sides of you. And those are the people that sometimes we take advantage of. And really, when we pop off or have a bad day, they're the ones that are getting that rebuttal, right? And I know I'm, I'm sounding like I'm off track. But what I mean is these animals that we groom, if you are in a position where you are overworked, frustrated, underpaid, and you feel that heaviness and it, it comes out in your work, don't take it out with people that you love and don't take it out with the animal that we're grooming. Take it out at the gym. Take it out on a run. Take it out by saying, I'm, I need a time out. I need to get out of here. And I'm not coming back until I feel good. You know, I'm overworked. I've been doing seven days. If, if this is frustrating to you and I have had to take my own lessons, back up and really evaluate what's important. Do you need more time to yourself? Do you need rest time? Are you doing too many dogs? Take less dogs. You know, because we are only in charge of ourselves. If there's anything that we're in charge of, it's one thing, us, ourselves. So Gidget had a really bad seizure today and I had done everything I could do to make sure I tried to make it just as smooth as possible. Uh, her mom was sitting in the lobby. I checked her in. Uh, I got my setup done before I even handled the pet. I was running a couple minutes behind. I got my bathtubs done. I do little tubs for her because what I found, believe it or not, so if I use the spray nozzle, she definitely like panics. And um, so since 2016, I've been trying every, is it the groom loop? No. The first day I thought it was. She had a seizure on the grooming table her first time in. I think that was just because of the, it was a, a kind of a process. And then never did she have a seizure on the table again ever after that. Now, uh, the second groom, she had a seizure. We're, we're talking, you know, since 16, 17, 18, 19, we're going to almost three years. So I have had lots of, lots of time with her to be, be able to look at what she reacts to. So never again has she had a seizure on the table, ever, after the day one, ever. Now, the second time or whatnot, the second time and then a few times later and then a few times, we always do real good. It takes three to five times of no seizures. It's so cool when she was having a seizure every time they pulled up at that veterinarian office and she got her dog groomed at the veterinarian office, right? So then I realized if I use the water nozzle, turn it on, she would panic, panic, boom, have a seizure, boom, it's over. You have a seizure, you, for me, you talk through the seizure the whole time, just talk. It's okay, Gidget, it's okay, Didi's here, I'm here, I got you, come out of it, come out of it, you know, and talk through that seizure. For me, my belief is that hearing is still happening. You are gonna lose your eyesight, you are gonna lose everything, but you are if you have hearing, you are still gonna hear yourself through that. Have you ever been over-medicated? Like, you got too much medicine, and you could still hear things, but you, you couldn't process them? I watched a friend of mine lay in a hospital bed with cancer and she was older than me and she was a first sergeant in the military. I had groomed all three of her Pekingese, two Rusty and Randy until they passed away and Sophie until she moved, until mom passed away and she moved. The pet moved in with the mom's kids and they moved away. Sophie, I really hope you're doing okay out there. I really, really should reach out and see where you're at and how are you and if you are still with us. I really miss you. But her mom, Alice, I loved her so much. One of those folks that no matter what, I could go over there on 4th of July. I was always invited for Christmas. They were definitely having some kind of powwow at the, uh, the local uh, VFW, you know, military. So Alice, I miss you. And I could talk to Alice about anything. She just understood me. Um, chain smoker, man. When, it, when I looked at her house to help her maybe sell her house, I was like, oh girl. I said, it smells like smoking here bad, you know, like chain smoker. 
beautiful person though, one of those people that you know would never screw you over. You know what I'm talking about? Boy, I better make sure I'm still rec recording. Um, so Alice passed away of cancer, and I want to say uh, it's been five years maybe, and I still think about her. She made this for me, and I this she made that for me when I f first had my business. Um, she's been with me that that long. She she made that for me, and I don't want to get rid of it. It's falling apart, Alice, but. I still want to look at it, you know. I had all all kinds of stuff, Makio's card, everything posted on there. I just cleaned it off. I realized I probably want to get thumbtacks out of here. And so I'm going to redo something, something. But I want to still see it. I still want to see that she made that for me. So Alice is a, a great example of just a, just a great human, right? But my point with bringing up Alice is that when she had cancer and I went to visit her, not only did I feel like her family members were over your shoulder, they didn't want us having fun. They wanted us to sit there and be like, you know, sad and like she's already gone. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. When folks are in the hospital, like I know Alice well, right? I've partied with Alice. Uh, we would go, uh, we went on a me and like six other women all above like be i was the youngest of them all and it was so fun if you're watching this and you were there i love you it was so fun they were all 20 and 20 years older than me all of them everybody <laughs> but that's who i can relate to right part of it part that's you um people who can get me i'm an old soul okay and we went on a, we rented a cab. They rented a cab and they invited me. Alice invited me. And I pitched in and I showed up with my dogs. It was awesome. And I was thinking I was only there two nights. And I gotta say I had the best time of my life. But with Alice, I knew who she was, right? Your friends know you the best. Remember I told you that? Your friends, your family, they know you the best. And sometimes they don't accept you for who you are. And that's up to you to figure out. Sometimes people hold you back, right? So Alice, gosh, man, <sighs> time passes very fast. Our life here is not very long. Before you blink, you're going to realize life is so fragile, precious. The people that you love, you know, uh, we just should try to make the best of what we have and who we have and who we have now and not forget where you came from or who was there. So while Alice was in the hospital, a friend of hers from the military had driven like four hours to see her. And I decided to meet her up. We decided to kind of meet there together because it was like um, family wasn't really telling us to come visit. Family wasn't telling anybody. And Alice was a first sergeant in the military and she had many, many military friends. So I made it a point to say it myself. Hey, you guys, Alice has got cancer. She's in like basically so drug loaded that she can't even speak. If you want to see her, say her, say anything to her, please go. Try to let the family let you see her. Come on, you guys. You don't take a military member and not let people come say goodbyes and stuff. Wake up. Ugh. Humanity. It's like they didn't want anybody to know that she was going. And let me tell you, if I didn't get to say goodbye to Alice, I'd have been one really hot, missed, pissed off person. She was a close friend of mine. She sat here in my salon here, here. On, on those wood stairs right there, on those wood stairs, and she cried to me and said, Dee Dee, I have cancer. What am I gonna do and who's gonna take my dog? Will you take my Sophie? Will you take her? I said, Alice, of course I will take your Sophie. She sat in my, before the family got here, before the family talked to her, you know what I'm saying? And then the family wasn't um, going to let people, what are you thinking? Oh gosh. Okay. So we visited Alice and we could feel like they kept coming, you know, like when you go to a store and they're watching you over your shoulder, like, what are you doing? There's nothing we could possibly be doing. Alice can't even move. She's so drugged up. I was like, oh heck no. If Alice was here right now, first of all, I don't care if she had cancer. She would have a cigarette. She, she would, I know, you know her, I know her, right? So I said, um, girl, I'm having a brain fart because I never hang out with you. So I told her friend, I said, give me your cigarette. So she gave me her cigarette. I don't smoke, but I got the cigarette. And I said, here, Alice. I said, smell the cigarette. Because you just, you know, 
I'm not trying to say promote cancer and smoking or whatever. I'm just saying I know Alice. And if she was awake right now, which she was so drugged up, if she was awake right now, then she would have um, lit a cigarette. So I got that cigarette out and I let her smell it on her nose and she was out like a light. I mean, she's out. The medicine was so heavy. And this is how I know they can hear you. The, my whole point is they can hear you. You not know she started smiling? Oh, it was so beautiful. And she started smiling and she chuckled in her uh, como, uh, coma state. And I looked at her friend and I said, I told you, she's, she knows we are here. We, she is laughing with me. She's laughing at me and laughing with us right now, like laughing. And I said, I know you would smoke this girl. I let her smell the cigarette. And I said, I'm going to leave it right there on your lip, you know. And um, we got to talking more. And I, and I said, girl, we are not going out like this. And she was laid up. She was laid up. Was just laying there flat. No facials. Like gone. Just so heavily drugged up. Because this cancer had taken hold of her body. And I lifted, I got her arms. I know you guys think I'm an idiot, but let me tell you, please do this if I'm in my deathbed, okay? Drugged up that I cannot even move. You know how you're laying there and you cannot move and um, you wish you could, but you, could, you can't, you can't even tell your arm to move? It, it is. I know somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. I know you can relate because the meds are so strong. Some meds are so strong, you're like, can you help me? But I can't really talk either. And I also listened to a, a gentleman tell his story and that was the exact story too. His wife had been hit by a car. He was in the hospital with her. She was in coma. Do you not know when she came out of coma, she told him she heard everything he said to her. Those months and months that she was in coma, she knew everything. He, she came out of it. She heard it all. So when I was standing over her after I did the cigarette thing, I got her arms and I said, Alice, Alice, yeah. And we, I started just dancing with her arms. And I tell you what, we started laughing. It would be the last time I got to see her smile and laugh and she couldn't even open her eyes, but she mustered up that laugh. I had her arms, I said, girl, we're dancing. Yeah, girl, Irma, oh my gosh, Irma, Irma, thank you, Irma, from Wichita Falls, Irma was like laughing, and er, I, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, with the butterfly and all that, Alice and I were dancing, she was in her bed, okay, laid up, and her arms flying around, because I'm holding them up, and I'm like, yeah, woo, you know, I'm sad, but I'm making it. Yes, Alice, I will never forget you. I'm here. I'm your BFF. I'm here. I love you. She started laughing and laughing. And I looked at Irma and I was like, she's laughing. <laughs> that would be the last laugh I got to see and witness and hear. So because of things I've been through, my friends leaving me here, um, dogs that I've had to hold until they passed in my arms, documentaries that I have heard um, people go through, I can tell you right now, I would tell you that the hearing is going to go last. And if you're there with your friends or family or your pets as they go, talk to them to the whole way out. The whole way, whisper, you might have to muster it up, save those tears, cry later, but you muster up those and you believe that they're there and hearing you. And you wouldn't believe it. Um, I almost done. I gotta finish this up. You wouldn't believe that when I was doing that, you know what stopped me? A family member. A family member came in and said, what are you guys doing? I think we could have danced a little bit longer. I think that we could have done that. Um, Alice passed away, not that night, not the next night, the morning after. So Gidget has seizures. And when she has seizures, they're really bad. And sometimes she doesn't have seizures for a very long time. And I am able to, what I feel like I do is do her a favor. Kind of look at everything. 
when she had her seizure, I got, she had her seizure, I talked to her the whole time, helped her stay, you know, come on baby, come on baby, come out, you know, because they're going to come out of it usually. And guess what else I do? I always have the pet parent waiting outside. If she doesn't want to wait in the lobby, they wait outside in the car. They always wait. Every time, every groom, 45 minute groom, they always wait for her. We do not blow dry her. So as soon as she got to a point where she was almost resting, like I split, lickety split, went out there, waved her in, ran back in here, she's still not doing great. Poop everywhere. You know, when you have all this going down, you know the body is kind of shut down for a minute, shivering, shaking, doing this thing. It's having its own mental seizure. Things are shutting down and doing all kinds of stuff at that point. Pee and poo go everywhere, you guys. You can't rush that. You have to be there for the animal or the person and you just have to ride it out until they get out of it. And if they don't get out of it, if you have a pet that has starts having multiple seizures, if she'd have breathed, then went back into a seizure, I would say immediately go to the veterinarian now, go. And I would send her to my favorite veterinarian. So in this case, I waved mom in, mom came coming in. I said, come on, come on, come in here. Like come in, I was already back at the tub with her helping her go through that seizure, making sure she was okay, sustaining it, getting to a point where she came at back out of it. And then we get her on the table after, you know, and I said, look, let's just wrap it up. That's what you do. You don't keep going and try to tidy up and da, 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 da. No, we had, I left a bushy face cause it was all bad and her, she's really horrible with the face now. So mom and I did her face in less than two minutes and I said, good enough, go, good, good, go. So you hustle, bustle, you get the job done, you do it trying to not harm the pet any more than possible, any more trauma than possible, and you try to make it as easy as possible. And that's what we were able to do, and that's what we did today. But she had a very bad seizure, so I did not put her back on the table here to finish her grooming. So you'll see that when I was grooming her, doing the tent all over. She looked fine, right? Doing good. And then we didn't come back and finalize out. So here's my finalize out and my little stories for you. So you can kind of see a little bit behind why I make certain choices. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to shop with us at myfavoritegroomer.com and pick up your dog up stand or dog up mini at dogupstand.com. Pick up that dog up stand at dogupstand.com. All right, I love you guys. Thanks for your contributions, your support. Read the description of every video. I try to make my own remarks now. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I couldn't do it without you. We'll see you soon.